Hi, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio, and I realized there was something I forgot to teach you guys. One of the things that I originally wanted to show you was when you click the button, I want it to add some animation to the buttons. So when you click them, they have like a, a bounce effect. Right now, when you click them, they just kind of fade it in and out, and that's just you know normal uh, default iPhone experience. But what I want to do is when you click on this button, I want it to give it a bounce, and I'll show you what that looks like and how we go about that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another folder here. I like to keep my files organized. And we'll just call this custom controls. And what I want to do is, is remember how in our designable for our button, what we did is we inherited from the UI button and we added more functionality to it that we can see over in the inspector. It's going to be something like that, except I'm going to be, again, inheriting from the UI button, but this time I'm going to override one of the functions of the button to make it do something different instead. So let's add a new file. Cocoa Touch class, fine. We want to subclass the button. And for this, the button is going to bounce a little bit, so I'll just call it a like a bounce button. Default location is fine. Okay. So this might look familiar again. Again, we have a class that inherits the UI button. And this time I'm going to override when it is touched. So every time it is touched, it'll animate. Okay, so we're inheriting from UI button. And what I want to do now is I want to override one of the functions of the UI button. And that is the touches began. Yeah, this is it right here. So it says tells the responder. And remember, and responder is basically something that responds to something happening on the UI. So it tells the responder when one or more fingers touch down in a view or a window. So this, this will trigger, this will get called or triggered when you, every time you touch the button. And I mean, we don't really care about with how many fingers you touch it with, or if you're swiping or something like that, just when you touch the button. So usually we write functions for the touch up inside of a button, but we want this code that I'm about to write to happen every time you touch it. Okay, so every time you touch the button, we want this, we want to animate it. So the first thing we're going to do is the button has a property called transform and we're going to modify that transform. Transform is basically if you want to make something bigger or you want to rotate something, you set the transform property. Now, because we're inheriting from the button, self means the UI button. And when I say transform, uh, I could just reference it like this and then give it a, uh, a transform. Transform. And there's many different things you can do with a transform. Some of this you might not totally understand. Uh, for example, CG affine transform. What that means is CG stands for core graphics. It's just part of the uh, framework that Apple gives you to operate with. Affine or affine. I'm actually, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. But what it means is, let's see, the simplest definition, it's a mathematical term. And what it means is, it preserves parallel relationships. So notice, notice these, these things that you can do here. When you rotate an object, you're still, the, the sides are still parallel to each other. So when something is moved or scaled, the sides of the view are still parallel to each other. They're not skewing, they're not warping, I guess you could say. So when you rotate, you scale. Scale means to you know, make something bigger or smaller. Uh, when you do any of these functions, it will maintain parallel relationships between the sides of the object. And that's what affine pretty much means. And transform just basically means to, to change something. So we, when we transform this object, we want to scale it. We want to make it just a little bit bigger. So when you supply a value here, like 1.1, that means it will make it 1.1% bigger. It, 
so if it, if it was one, if I left it as one like this and did the transform to it, it's not going to change anything. And you notice you see like scale X and, and Y. Well, that's, you know, changing things horizontally and vertically. So we want to make thing, we want to make this object just a little bit bigger when you click it. So we're going to make the value uh, greater than one. And after it's bigger, we want to reset it back to its original size. Normally when you do that, you, d you say uh, self.transform equals uh, CG affine transform. And then you don't have to say scale uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 to get it back to its original size. Instead, what you can do is you can just say identity. And identity, all that means, I don't know why they chose this word, but all it means is it resets it back to the default. I think maybe you can, it'll give some information if we click it. Nah, it doesn't. But basically this is just resetting the transform property back to its default the way it was before you changed it. So think of this as uh, default. So we're gonna set it back to its default, but we wanna animate that function when we set it back to its default. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, UI view dot animate. Oh, maybe if I spell UI view right. There you go, autocomplete. And the one we want is, ah, this one right here. So notice the, the description down here. It says performs a view animation using a time curve corresponding to the motion of a physical spring. So it's gonna give some spring, it's gonna make it bounce. Uh, timing curve, a curve just basically means how fast something moves, meaning it can go fast or slow. And there, you have different options when you create an animation. You can, there's one of these options here, right here. You can make something, I'll show you. Right here, so you can apply curves. Curves, like if you uh, ease out, curve ease out, that means if you're, when your animation is happening and if it's very fast, it'll slow down toward the end. Ease in and out, that means it'll s start slow, then go to like maybe a faster speed and then slow down again on its way out. And of course, curve ease in means it's going to start slow and then speed up. So that's, that's curve kind of, references uh you know the, the speed of something for this we're just going to we're not going to use any of these options actually we're going to keep it as a default curve and instead for this animation we're going to allow user interaction since this is a button now the time interval we'll just say like half a second that should be good delay i don't want any delay i want it to happen uh, right away when i click the button Okay, using spring with damping. If you if you put a one, it's gonna completely damp out the spring and it's just gonna be a plain old animation. So there's no sense doing that. And if I use zero, that means it's gonna spring a lot. There's no damping on the spring. The spring's just gonna bounce up and down, up and down, up and down. So let's do half, half damping. So we only want the spring to bounce half as much. Initial velocity, it's, it's how fast the uh, the animation starts. I'm gonna go with six on this one. Okay, animation, this is where you do the magic. And I'm going to put this code in here. Okay, and completion, we don't want any code to happen after the animation completes. Okay. So there's our button, and we have an animation uh, that will happen every time you uh, touch the button. So there's another thing that we have to consider here too. How do we get this button to inherit our new bounce button? Because remember, if we go back here, we have bounce button here. But then if I go to bounce button, I'm gonna lose my designable button. So instead what I'm going to do is combine both of these custom classes together and I'm going to go to designable button and instead of inheriting from button, I'm going to inherit from my bounce button. Just like that. So now 
bounce button is a it adds functionality to the UI button, and then designable button adds functionality to the bounce button. So it's kind of like a, a chain of customizations that we're doing there. So let's run it and see how those buttons bounce. Okay, you see the difference there? That's exactly what we want. All right, the animation looks great, but you notice there's something wrong now. <laughs> it's not navigating to uh, the model pop-up, so let's figure that out. Okay, if we go into the bounce button, let's see what happens here. Ah, yeah, I am missing something. So remember, what we're doing here is we're overriding the touches began, which means touches began has some functionality to it, but we're going to override it with our own custom functionality that's here. But what we want to do is we also want to execute the default functionality for touches began. So in order to do that, we're going to say super, and super refers to the class that you're inheriting, which is UI button. And we're just going to have it basically uh, execute its default functionality after it executes our custom functionality. So I'm just going to pass in these parameters here, touches. And remember, so I'm just grabbing these parameters from here and putting them down here. And uh, with event. Just like that. And now let's run it and see if that fixes our problem. Yes, it does. Okay, I taught you how to override the button, uh, some of the functionality of the button to give it some animation, some custom animation. Tell you a little bit about what affine is, you know, it's preserving parallel relationships, and how to reset the transform property back to the default using a CG affine transform dot identity, which to me should be default <laughs> instead of identity. So that just doesn't make any sense to me. And then, uh, and then we fixed a problem where we weren't calling the default functionality of touches began after we gave it our uh, custom functionality. I hope this video helped. If, please give the video a, a like if you did like it. Uh, provide any constructive you know, feedback if there's something that I can improve on. And consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.